Well, that's the deal. That's what I know so far. A man in London, Ontario has been fired from his job. A woman in Calgary traced the name and found that he was an employee at the store. Brought the comments to the attention of the manager. The man says it was, well, the, I guess the the guy that did this, this Justin Hutchins, said it was a social experiment. It was posted outside the workplace. Now, I'm asking you, should he be fired? Gosh, I don't know. I, like I said, it's I, I like, this is what I called for. I've said it many times that young people and people that do this should have some kind of deterrent or that there should be some severe penalty. But it, as far as I know, those laws aren't on the books. And I don't know in this economy of a more severe penalty than taking someone's job away. And I, you know what? Okay. Whether he said it or not, is that due process? Would, uh, well, let's, let's ask somebody who knows this. Stuart Rudner is a labor lawyer with Miller Thompson, uh, Thompson, and Stuart joins us now. Hi, Stuart. Good afternoon. Thanks for having me on the show. Well, you're in the business, Stuart. Uh, you, I think you heard my commentary. I mean, I yeah, I don't know what to think about this. I, I without due process, I don't know if it's appropriate. Someone loses their job, no matter whether he admitted to making these awful, you know, comments, uh, posting them or not. Uh, how do you see it as a labor lawyer? Well, I think you hit the nail on the head earlier when you said that, that what this guy posted was unbelievably cruel. Um, but your your question is a good one. Can he be fired for it? Uh, and I think you've got to start by recognizing that in Canada, with, with some exceptions for unionized employees, anybody can be fired at pretty well any time for any reason other than human rights grounds. Uh, but otherwise, as I often say to clients, if you don't like the color of somebody's shirt, you can fire them. The only thing is you've got to give them notice or, you, or pay in lieu, what we usually call severance. So the question here is not so much should they have been able to fire him, but did they have just cause to fire him? Because if you fire someone with just cause, they don't get notice. They don't get severance. They're basically walked out and they get nothing. Right. Uh, and that gets to the point you made earlier, but especially in this economy, it's a pretty, it's a pretty harsh punishment. I mean, it's often referred to as the capital punishment of employment law. Oh, boy. Yeah. And, you know, that's so a company has the pro- I've I've I learned that myself at one of a guy like you told me this out west He said, you know what? No one has a right to a job, Jeff. And he said the same thing. They can let you go anytime. And there, there's all these reasons and blah, blah, blah. And I understand that. Uh, so if this company has a uh, a morals clause or I know with my company here, me, I'm a little bit different. I'm uh, somebody who's on radio and television. I'm out in the co- in, in the public a lot. If I do something against, you know, the company's moral standards, I'm out of here faster than Jack the Bear, no matter how well I do for the company and how much money I make for them. That's just the rules of a company with 35,000 employees. Mm-hmm. Um, and, but, but, I mean, these guys at this other company may have a similar moral clause he may or may not have signed, right? So, uh, the, and even then, it doesn't matter. If they don't want him working for them, they can let him go, and uh, as I, it's been my experience, uh, somebody will say, take him to court, and most people don't have the money to take him to court. That's usually what happens. Yeah, that's the reality. I mean, usually it comes down to how much notice or how much severance should they get, and some people take it to court, most don't, but it's usually a, just a dollar figure that you negotiate. Here yeah. it's a much bigger question, and, yeah. and you laid it out pretty well at the outset. I mean, the first question is, can you even be punished for what you do off-duty? Yeah. Uh, and here, I mean, like your situation, right, if you're going around posting things like this online, it's going to impact the reputation of your employer. Right. And the same principle applies. I mean, generally speaking, what you do on your own time is your own business. Yeah. But if it's going to impact your employer, either their reputation, their ability to do whatever it is they do, their ability to manage you, if it has an impact on your employment, then people can be disciplined or dismissed for it. And, and I think, Stuart, the lesson here then is, if, if I don't know the story of how this woman traced him, um, but... She probably found his, I guess, Facebook page that said, I'm so-and-so Justin Hutchings, and I work at Mr. Big and Tall. So if you've got that on your Facebook page and you think you're not doing something involving work, you better think again. Uh, Exactly. I mean, most of the cases along these lines that I see where somebody has said something online, it was anonymous or there was really no way to to know who the person worked for. But like you said, if if you can just make uh, one or two clicks and find out, that's going to impact the employer. and. and, uh, Certainly, I can understand why the company here let him go. Whether or not they had just cause, 
is another issue which may get before the courts one day or, or may not. So, you know, if, if you were representing this guy, it's just hypothetically, if you were representing this guy, would you be looking at, uh, you know, the cause? I mean, the, the just cause angle right off the bat? Well, here's the thing. When you're looking at whether, whether you have just cause to be fired or, or to fire someone, uh-huh. it's basically a two-step process. One is the employer's got to show that the individual engaged in some misconduct. Uh, and then once you show that, clearly they're deserving of discipline. Uh-huh. But the next question is, does it deserve summary dismissal? And what the courts have said, and this gets a lot more complicated than, than most people realize, is you don't just look at what the person did in isolation. You've got to take what they call the contextual approach. You look at basically everything that's relevant. How long they've been there? Have they been in trouble before? What kind of position do they have and how much you know, trust or uh, how much trust do you need to have in the individual? Are there any mitigating circumstances? I mean, does the person have some sort of psychological condition? Or are they suffering from depression? Whatever it is, you look at all the circumstances, and then the company's got to decide, do we have just cause to dismiss, or is some lesser penalty appropriate? And here, you know, we know what the guy did and what he posted. We don't know any of the other factors. Okay. Well, you know, Stuart, I thank you very much for your valuable time. I know that you're a busy guy, and thank you for sharing uh, this information with us. Uh, Thanks. It's my pleasure.